Crime victims are often left feeling alone, but today law enforcement partners are coming together to change that. We have details ahead. And we're bringing you more tonight on the girl battling disease and her beating the odds after a donor's gift of life. Your KRHD News starts right now. Connecting the Brazos Valley, this is KRHD News. Thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Brittany DeFran. For the first time in three years, hundreds of crime victim advocates were able to advance their education, focusing on topics such as human trafficking, murder schemes, and gang activity. KRHD reporter Rebecca Fiedler brings us inside the Brazos County Expo, Expo for this unique conference. When a person becomes the victim of a crime, it can take a village to give them the care and the representation that they deserve. Here at the Every Victim Every Time conference held annually at the Brazos County Expo, people from all different kinds of professions learn the best ways that they can help assist a person who's been victimized. Gwen Lever attended the conference on Tuesday as a volunteer therapy dog handler with the crisis response organization, HOPE. The group's goal in attending was mainly to provide emotional comfort to attendees as they discussed very emotional topics. We'll, we'll kind of open your eyes up and say, okay, well, what? maybe that's the reason why certain things are. Because when you don't have an answer, you default to, it must just be how it is. But when sitting through Brazos County District Attorney Jarvis Parsons' lecture on implicit bias, Lever learned something that affected her. Uh, just learn how you don't realize you have an internal bias, like gender, race. Um, it affects your practice. I'm a, I'm a nurse, so when you approach a patient, you have all kind of history of, of your biases from the past that you have to let go of. People just like Lever and in completely different positions, such as cops, lawyers, school teachers, paramedics, therapists, were taught about new approaches to victim advocacy based on ever evolving research and data, especially in regards to children, racial minorities, and the LGBTQ plus community. Um, what we try to do is try to make the talk, to make people understand that A, this is not about our intention. These are things that are that many times lurk underneath the surface and it may impact how we make decisions. The conference drew in nearly 600 attendees from all across the country, sponsored by dozens of local nonprofits, companies, and university programs. Due to the pandemic, it had been canceled these past two years. And we wanted to be able to um, provide that training in a safe environment for our attendees. And so we are very pleased with, with the way that we were able to put the conference on this year. Conference Day 2 continues tomorrow. Reporting in Bryan, Rebecca Fiedler, KRHD News. New tonight at 5, authorities have found a woman's body inside a box in Houston. HPD says a maintenance man reported a suspicious box with a bad odor Monday morning. They say surveillance video captured a person carrying a U-Haul box on a dolly, dropping it, and then walking away. A man was arrested and could face charges relating to the case. Police are still determining whether he was the person in the video. The victim's identity has not yet been released. Years now, medical debt is a problem plaguing millions of Americans. But one local youth group is partnering with a health agency to clear the burden. KRHD News reporter Diamond Dixon explains. The youth group at Friends Congregational Church has partnered with RIP Medical to help relieve medical debt in the area. The youth group was on a mission trip last summer and learned they could help relieve medical debt in the Brazos Valley. For each dollar they raise, it is equivalent to $100. They have access to these debt portfolios that are typically sent to collection agencies and a lot of times are not going to be paid off. 
and they have an opportunity to reserve those portfolios and allow people to fundraise so that those can be paid off. They have now raised over $40,000 towards the Brazos Valley Medical Debt Forgiveness Fund and look forward to raising $50,000 by this weekend to close out their campaign. The youth group is wrapping up their campaign this weekend at their spring fling event here at Friends Congregational Church. Reporting in College Station, Diamond Dixon, Carrie G News. It's hard to believe how sick she was to how well she's doing now. We're bringing you more tonight on a young girl who's living her life to the fullest thanks to an organ transplant. 25 News reporter Bain Froney is shining a light on her father and the work he's doing to pay it forward. Chance's daughter Rowan received a liver transplant at just five months old, saving her life. And now he's made it his mission to inform people about becoming organ donors and the impact it can have on a family. At the end of the day, we have a walking testament of what the outcome is and you know we're just unbelievably blessed to know that God has big plans for Rowan and our family. And to continue showing support for his daughter and other recipients and donors, he will be biking almost 600 miles, participating in the Lone Star Circle of Life bike tour. You know, riding anywhere from 100, probably about 100 miles a week for a long time. Um, and so there was really never a question um, if I was going to do it. Over a span of five days, participants will ride hundreds of miles, starting in Waco, traveling through different Texas cities, and ending in Temple. Uh, each stop and each place that we're going um, throughout Texas, so we'll be honoring not only donors, but recipients as well. Each of the 12 cyclists has a story related to donation. And Chance's goal is to make it to the event at Belton High School so that he can share his story about his daughter and her fight to live. To, to show the world and show our area and our community how much this is important to us and the opportunities that each individual person can have to, to save somebody's life is, is something we can't take for granted. And throughout the ride, local events will be hosted in the communities that are in the path of the route in hopes to get more people to realize the power of donation. You can sign up for Be The Match. You can donate blood. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do to help save somebody's life. Just like a donation did for 11 year old Rowan. Here's a fact you may not know. 90% of the people who are waiting for an organ transplant in the US are waiting for a kidney. That is according to organdonor.gov. It is also one of the few organs that can be donated by someone who is alive. For one woman, giving a kidney to a complete stranger was actually a bucket list item. There was a transplant table from one of the local hospitals and I just I realized when I got there that the time was right my children were adults other issues you know my situations in my life had changed and it just felt right and so I literally just blurted out to them at the table you know I've always wanted to donate a kidney I'd really like to donate a kidney and they said okay and they handed me a pamphlet they gave me um, a specific name and phone number to contact Diane Finkenauer is a registered dietitian that works with patients going through kidney dialysis, which is where her inspiration to donate came from. Because of stories like hers, Diane's workplace, DaVita, expanded paid time off benefits to four weeks for employees who donate a kidney, liver, or bone marrow. They gave us this video of a dia uh, dialysis treatment center uh, just so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is something that federal employees are also offered for kidney and liver donations. About half of states extend this to state employees as well, according to the National Kidney Foundation. Beyond that, it's up to a company how much PTO and coverage is offered for living donors. So if our teammates or others, others in the industry, others, um, other employers see that and they're equally inspired, I just think that's great. Our goal really is to promote organ donation uh, across the board. He also says there are several benefits to living donation that a deceased donor just can't provide, like a shorter waiting list and being able to plan the surgery out. The other benefits of a living donor kidney transplant is that they tend to work better, they tend to work faster, and they tend on average to last longer. Now, in Diane's case, her donation led to two people getting a kidney. She ended up being matched with a patient whose friend wanted to give his kidney, but wasn't a match, and so his went to another person in need. By far, one of the most rewarding experiences in life, I'm 
you know, I'm just a regular person who had a spare kidney and was able to donate. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. There's nothing special or different about me, <laughs> you know? What a message. Now, to learn more about Living Donation, you can contact your local transplant center. Just how important are our phones? Yeah, they keep us organized and in contact, and we joke that we're dependent on them. But as Dan Grossman shows us, there's some new scientific research that suggests we might actually have an emotional dependency on them. Let's say you're taking a walk in the park. You see someone, you don't really want to say hi, and you don't know what to do. Many people, they'll whip out their phones, look down at it, and pretend they're not even there. In many ways, these devices are our security blankets, and they dictate how we interact with the world, even when we're not using them. What word comes to mind when you think of your smartphone? Time. Uh, Connection. Needed. There are opinions and feelings. So when you think about your smartphone, what words come to mind? Uh, necessary. Uh, yeah, very personal. And then there are evidence-based facts. Phones have uh, transformed our lives. They're very personal, and but at the same time, they have a, a darker side that we should be aware of. Anir Sila is an associate professor of marketing at the University of Florida. During the pandemic, he sought to figure out how our phones affect us, and his research shows they affect everything from how we talk to how we shop to how we interact with the world. Something that just makes you feel more comfortable, you reach to it when you feel a little nervous. Uh, obviously, when it's not around, we, we, get, we can get very, uh, very upset. Sila's main finding is we see our phones as an extension of ourselves and therefore act more emotionally when we use them. When we shop on our phones, Sila found we're willing to pay more for things we view as expressive and unique. And when we talk on them, we tend to express more polarizing beliefs than when we're talking in person or even on the computer. So I actually argue that our phone acts like a sort of adult pacifier. Shiri Melamod also studies phones as an assistant professor of marketing at the University of Pennsylvania and has found the effects go deeper. When we scroll social media on them, she says we're more vulnerable to believe fake news. And when we're talking with people, we're more willing to share information we wouldn't share otherwise. Think friends, strangers, even scammers. People are more willing to disclose intimate or personal information when it's elicited on their smartphone than when it's elicited on their PC. And part of the reason for this is this idea that we feel sort of more comforted when we're engaging in certain tasks on our phone than on our PC. You can't go a day without using it at least once, like for some purpose. They are integral parts of our lives that offer convenience and connection, but we know that. It's a chronicle of my life. It's the parts we don't always pay attention to that researchers suggest we study more closely so we can be aware and use them for good. I'm Dan Grossman. This As we take a look outside on our Clark Roofing Cam, you can see that we have become mostly cloudy across the region. It's not going to be a lot of rain falling from these clouds over the evening hours, but we may get a couple of showers later on tonight as the atmosphere cools a little bit and we could be seeing a couple of showers develop across the area. But anything that happens is going to be relatively light. There are your clouds moving on in from earlier today, seeing some sunshine to now mostly cloudy conditions. And those clouds extend all the way down towards San Antonio. And we even have a few showers across the hill country and then up into southwestern Oklahoma. This little disturbance will continue to progress to the east. And again, a couple of showers are possible through the overnight hours tonight. And you can see that here on our future track by 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. Again, a spotty shower or two. Anything that falls will be very light, so don't expect much out of this. Then as we get into the afternoon, still partly to mostly cloudy skies, winds will be up in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range, so it will be quite breezy across the area. Then as we get into Thursday morning, we'll probably do it again with a chance for a couple of showers, maybe a little bit of drizzle to start off the day, and then it clears out into the afternoon, and things are looking pretty quiet as we head into Friday and Saturday. So tonight, temperatures will make their way down into the 60s, pretty mild out there with the increased cloud cover, and then tomorrow, highs will be into the 80s, and with that south wind, it'll be a humid Breezy day across the area and taking a look at your forecast temperatures 85 on Wednesday going up to 87 Thursday on into Friday with lows at night close to 70 degrees through the weekend. We'll even see the upper 80s as we make our way into the weekend and maybe a chance for a few scattered showers and thunderstorms late Sunday into Monday.
Finding extra money to repair your home is tough, especially with inflation. But Alexa Liaco shows us one way you can get help making your home more energy efficient for free. Two of the biggest ways you can save both energy and money in your home are by adding insulation or sealing up doors and windows. And you can save hundreds of dollars per year on your energy bills by doing this. I met up with some experts who are making these changes to people's homes all for no charge. We've been here now uh, 37 years come September and raised all three of our boys here, six grandchildren. So it's uh, this is home. The Page family built their lives here. Good boy. That's my good boy. But this house made of memories wasn't made to be efficient. A lot of heat always comes right through here. The house gets too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter, making it expensive to keep comfortable. Our bills at times in the winter have exceeded $300 a month. Norma and her husband have dreamed of upgrading windows or insulating the attic, but for years, those projects have been on hold. We're senior citizens. We uh, live primarily on Social Security. You know, some of those kinds of things that you need done to your home are just not affordable on that kind of income. Yeah, 20 of them will be okay. But she found some unexpected help at the Energy Resource Center, a nonprofit in Colorado that helps make older homes more energy efficient. There are similar groups doing this in every state. You know, our lowest income families tend to live in the oldest and least efficient housing. So people who can least afford a high energy bill have the highest bill. In Norma's home, they're insulating the attic and sealing windows and doors. This work is needed for millions of American homes. Back before the, the 70s, homes were built pretty much without insulation. You know, if we go into a home that's 100 years old with a bad heater, we could save them over 50% of their utility usage. And with the $3 billion investment from Congress, programs across the country like this will get more funding to help families. You know, for a long time, we were kind of these energy geeks over in the corner doing the work that we do, and we know how important it is, but it feels like more people are becoming aware of the importance of you know, being more efficient with the energy that we use. For the Page family, this investment is one they want more people to take advantage of. I mean, you can be living comfortably, not above your means, and qualify for this program. People need to know. Because a little help with the necessities at home can bring comfort in other places too. At this point, it means paying co-payments and for medications and things of that nature. There's not a whole lot of luxury in living these days, but we're at peace and this adds something to it. If you're wondering how to get this help in your neighborhood, it's simple. All you have to do is go to energy.gov and search the weatherization assistance program. There are groups like the Energy Resource Center all over the country waiting to help. I'm Alexa Liaco. There are side effects to increased cybersecurity. Some people are overwhelmed by all the security alerts. Others are changing their behavior when they see a privacy notice. Some people who read a generic privacy notice are less interested in making a purchase. That's according to a report that was published in January. However, the impact went away when the notice included phrases like, we care about your privacy. Experts say that personal language really goes a long way. The people who draft the privacy policies and privacy notices uh, aren't typically thinking about uh, consumers' reactions to it as much as the legal ramifications for the firm. And, and that's what we found really makes the difference here is that uh, when you're communicating that without a sense of uh, the firm's caring for the consumer, uh, it, it has a negative effect rather than a positive effect on purchase interest. For others, it's the number of alerts that is causing anxiety. More than 60% of US IT experts say they get 500 cloud security alerts each day. More than half of the organization believe that they miss critical alerts on a weekly or sometimes even say daily basis. And this is really a bad place to be because we have the tools uh, that generate alerts that are technically correct, but they cannot be effectively used Alert fatigue is not unique to IT professionals. It's also common in the world of medicine or construction. It can lead to burnout and friction in the workplace.
Well, there may not be an easy fix. Experts say the key is to cut down on the total number of alerts by eliminating the ones that are not business critical. Bug sprays have chemicals and candles don't always do the trick. On tomorrow's lineup, we check out some new technology to help keep the bugs away this summer. World News Tonight is just ahead, and we're back in 30 minutes for KRHD News at 6. Until then, have a good evening.